So this is the end and millions of Americans are not ready for it. Now in a time when we still have rather high inflation, the American people are putting expenses on credit cards and Congress is even battling themselves, we are about to see the end of one of the biggest assistance programs the American people have seen. Yeah, that's right. According to a senior Biden official, actually multiple senior Biden officials, they say they plan to end the public health emergency as soon as this spring. Now, I've talked about this before. This is coming. But these senior Biden officials, they stated that they previously had hopes of ending the public health emergency back in the summer of 2022, but they delayed this due to the possible spike in cases this winter. They say it was a good move. Now, where are we at now? Well, now that we have seen what is possible or a possible surge will look like moving forward, Biden officials say they're fairly confident that we can actually move away from the White House-led assistance programs and we can put the responsibility of shots and, and treatments and really the assistance of the American people, we can put this back onto the American people and to the private market. So what does this mean? Well, first off, this means there's going to be changes. This means there will be a lot of changes. And, and let me just give you an idea of how much these changes are going to cost us. For example, if you want to go and get the shot, then it won't cost you the $20.69 a dose that the government currently pays. No. According to Moderna and Pfizer, they are stating that their plan is to charge between $110 and $130 per dose. So yeah, it is going to get a lot more expensive. To make matters even worse though, you can't just push this over to your insurance. For example, if you're on, on Medicaid. Because for the people that are on Medicaid, more than 15 million people are currently enrolled in Medicaid and CHIP. They could actually be disenrolled once the public health emergency ends. Because during the uh, open enrollment period in the beginning of this emergency, more than 20 million people enrolled in Medicaid. This was big. This was a huge, huge number. But due to the public health emergency, states couldn't kick people off of Medicaid even if they didn't qualify simply due to income. But at the end of this public health emergency, this would remove this provision and people could be disenrolled in record numbers. Now, one thing I can tell you is that there is still a lot of speculation as to whether or not uh, the Department of Health and Human Services is going to uh, end this public health emergency. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, or at least the secretary, um, he says that he will give the public a 60-day notice before lifting the emergency declaration. However, the Biden administration says we want to provide a 90-day warning before this ends. So, this is why this takes us to the spring. Currently, it is January 10th, 2023. But if we give 90 days... This would be 90 days from, I believe, January 13th is when this is it was when this ends. But if this ends on January 13th, let's just or let's just say the 15th, right, the middle of the month. So that would take us to February, March, April 15th. That would be roughly 90 days. Now, why is this such a big deal? If we get into April, this means that the the colder months are pretty much behind us. This means that the cases are going to come down. This means this RSV, COVID, and also uh, the flu, everything is going to drop. This is good news. So this is why senior Biden officials are telling us that this spring is going to be the time when this public health emergency ends. But I wanna be very clear on this. Just because it ends does not mean we're out of the woods. And also just because it ends and, and we're not out of the woods, doesn't mean there's more assistance for the American people. Now, if that wasn't enough, okay, the end of the public health emergency would also result in lower food benefits. This is a big thing, and a lot of people have been asking about this. Within the SNAP program, there's a, another special program called the emergency allotment. This is at $95 minimum increase to nutrition assistance every single month. 
Now, many states are still paying for this. However, once the emergency uh, allotment ends, states would be required to use their own money in order to pay for this. And most states are not going to do this. The majority of states are going to end this at the end of January and February. Now, it is likely uh, not going to happen that all states are going to end it. But as a result, we will likely see a lot more food insecurity uh, you know, leading into the first few months of 2023. Now, here's another change. And this is something that I did hear a little bit about just the other day is a lot of adults who don't have children, who are not really working, they are struggling to uh, make ends meet. So what they do is they go and get SNAP benefits. Well, during the first few years uh, of this emergency, there was a provision that made it easy for adults ages uh, 18 to, I believe, 49 to uh, to go and get uh, food stamps. But before this emergency, if you were between ages of 18 and 49, you and you're unemployed, you didn't have any kids, you could get three months of benefits every three years. But during the past three years, that limit was suspended. So if you were between the ages of 18 and 49, no kids, no job, you didn't just get three months of benefits, you could get benefits you know, every single month. So that was big, but this will be going away. Now, according to state officials, the average beneficiary is going to lose about $82 per month. And those that qualify for the minimum SNAP benefits are going to see their subsidy drop from $250 down to just $20 a month. Okay. Now, why is this such a big deal? Think about it. If you are currently collecting the minimum SNAP benefits, okay, for one, it's the, it's the, and this is the hard part. You qualify for the minimum. However, even though you qualify for the minimum, everybody as of right now, because of this public health emergency, gets the maximum. You get the maximum benefit. So people that are only qualifying for the minimum SNAP benefits, you're going to see it drop from $250. That's the maximum down to just $20 a month. If you lose $230 every single month, that is paying for uh, food. How difficult is it going to be to live? Let me know down in the comment section below because I can tell you losing $230 every single month is a big, big deal. It's going to be very difficult just to live, to pay for bread and pay for meat and vegetables and, and fruits. It's going to be a struggle because food prices are still up by more than 10%. Now, I stated this earlier, is that more and more households are putting their expenses on credit cards. It is up. We are seeing more credit cards get maxed out today than this time last year. You know why? Food prices, energy costs. That is actually crippling the American people. So here's what I can tell you. Moving forward, we are going to see a lot of changes. One of the big changes is we are eventually going to get out of this public health emergency. I think that is, that is good news that we are eventually getting out of it because this also will uh, kind of be the sign that we are transitioning back to our normal lives. The problem though is that millions and millions of Americans are not ready for this. They're not ready for the end of the public health emergency simply because of all the benefits that they will lose as a result. So I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news as soon as we get it, as soon as we get the update from the Biden administration saying that they are going to extend the public health emergency. I will fill you in on that. That will likely come over the next you know, couple of days. But again, the big news is going to come when this public health emergency actually ends because that is also going to end a lot of the assistance programs. So thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.